My name's David Hallett, for those of you who are visitors to the area, and I've been known as a Nimbin poet for a long time. Don, thank you. I'm usually introduced at respectable places as a poet from Byron Bay, because that's meant to sound more uh, respectable. And then I always have to correct them and make a point of it, that I'm actually from Nimbin. And Nimbin, of course, has a very healthy, or if that's the right word for poets, healthy poetry scene thanks to, uh, particularly to Gail, who's struggling there with that small, atta newly attached dog that runs the poetry readings in Nimbin and coordinates the annual Nimbin Performance Poetry World Cup in September, which is one of Australia's richest poetry prizes with a $5,000 pool prize total in September. That's what I mean. And where does the money come from? Because it's in Nimbin. We know where the money comes from. It's shocking. But it's a very, that, very wonderful and a very popular event. So, a couple of poems to start. Is everyone ready for a poem out there? Yeah. Okay. It's a poem about this place that we live in. It's called The Northern Rivers. It is spoken through the old stones, which are the broken teeth on the craggy lips of an old volcano. It is whispered in the creek that fall from the forest to the sea, in the mist of the mountain birds that feather our fiery cheeks as we climb the trail to feast upon the view. They are folk song lines, how the cedar trees fell and the farms did swell across the valleys, how a hundred villages grew in the leap of water from the rock to the river mouth. By the turn of the century, by the wheel of the river, Grew a town where the loggers first did camp. Grew a city, a university, theatres and festivals that rivers and flowers and beef and blues and dance and food. <coughs> the river festivals of the Rainbow region. It is silent in the shadows of the forest. It is the veil of bat wing which blackens the twilight into deep night. The gold of fruit, the beat of farm and fleet. It is the passing of the winter miles where the fisherman stands once wet and poised upon his lonely rock. It is the old mountain where the sun first touches the land and the rivers spill to the sands into a sea of southern crossings and reflections of an ancient green land. Thank you. second poem I'd like to do is um, by Henry Lawson. And uh, when Henry was, was passing and he wanted to see the bush one more time and his friends bought him a ticket on the train to go out and see the bush for a last time. And it's reputed to be his last poem by Henry Lawson. On the night train, have you seen the bush by moonlight? from a train go running by, blackened log and stump and sapling, ghostly trees all dead and dry. Here a patch of glassy water, there a glimpse of mystic sky. Have you heard of the still voice calling yet so warm and yet so cold? I am the mother bush that bore you. Come to me when you are old. Did you see the bush below you sweeping darkly to the range, all unchanged and all unchanging, yet so very old and strange? Did you hear the bush of calling when your heart was young and bold? I am the mother bush that nursed you. Come to me when you are old. Through the long vociferous cutting, the night train swiftly sped. Did you hear the grey bush calling from the pine ridge overhead? You have seen the seas and cities. All seems done. All seems told. I am the other bush that loves you. Come to me. Now you are old. Henry Lawson.
Now that was a poem for ageing Aquarians and the cycle of life. Now, I was assigned a theme to the... Often at poetry readings, people come up and they get disjointed and they say, what's the theme of the night? And I said, oh, poetry is the theme of the night. But actually, in the program, I saw a theme ascribed to this poet's breakfast. Poetry from the heart. They chose that particular organ of the body rather than others, apparently. Now, so I said this to all the poets who were reading. There is the theme, poetry from the heart. Uh, the first two poems that I've read had nothing to do with that theme but so you may read from that theme if you so choose or just be a revolutionary poet and do some other theme but I thought I should do I always write from the heart I thought one poem very much from the heart before I introduce some of the other poets and I have a growing list of poets if you'd like to read something please come up and give me your name this poem is titled, The Golden Girl. In the mad world, in the beautiful world, he painted all these words to her. She said, it all came out of the blue, under a great blue sky where everything comes. He said, he was courting her. She was surprised to be courted. She said, what does that mean? She googled the 26 definitions of the verb to court on her smartphone. Then the thesaurus to cross-reference. He was glad she cross-referenced. She seemed to like the sound, to woo, to serenade, to allure, to enchant. Now she understood. She said she was years away from all that. Out of the blue, he asked to hold her hand for a moment. She was an ox. She was steadfast. She wouldn't be moved. He was a tiger. He was shining at her. He could see her moving in spite of herself, in spite of her shyness in spite of all her past. She could see that he was just too much. But he could see that she was just too much. They sat together. They were beautiful. They were mad. They were both just too much. A rainforest of trees and weeds was humming the last days of summer. They were wrapped in green under a great blue sky. He said she was the golden girl. She was silent. She sighed. But she didn't say no. She smiled. Thank you. For those who just arrived, this is our Poets Breakfast as part of the Aquarius anniversary. And we've got several Nimbin poets and some visiting poets who are going to read. Well-known poet and sometime dancer around these here parts. Please welcome up a poem from Bicko. Yeah, Bicko. Bicko. Yeah, Bicko. Yeah, Bicko. Yeah. 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 Something from the heart. I wrote this many years ago because this is my explanation for why I write poetry. I am a poet running sickle moon mad through your jaded fences to dance on your lawns. Drunk on the wine of the muse, howling incantations and imprecations at an indifferent moon. 
tumbling purple prose and indigo inspirations, twisting the lithe muscle of syntax and verb, leaping in extended flights of fancy, dancing words across a moon-struck world, clothing myself in lunar luminosities that swish and slide and sachet and swirl from my tongue to flood the air with cloud and visions raining from my lips lunified. I am a poet. I have been bitten by the hounds sent by Homer, Sappho, Shakespeare, Coleridge, Thomas, Plath and all the rest. Infected with verse, stricken with prosy, racked with rhyme laid low with lyricism, baying at the wine-soaked moon, chasing metaphors and meters, sniffing and scratching at the doors of truth, called by the wilderness outside to trust my senses to the lunatic night and run with the wolves. The moon calls and I must answer. Thank you. Thank you, Bicco. Doug, have you got a poem for us as well? Oh, sure. Yeah, Doug. Please welcome, also from Nimba, Doug, come on down. Hello there. Um, there's a local sport here, which is uh, Lismore bagging. Yeah. I thought I'd uh, write a short thing on that subject. And it goes like this. Um, it's called, If You Love Lismore. If Lismore was a woman, I'd marry her, knowing it would be hard on our children that people would yell cruel things across the street. Hey kids, you couldn't have been any more boring even if your dad had married Canberra. <laughs> hey mate, are you sure those are your kids? They look like casinos kids to me. <laughs> and I'd say to my children, kids, that's just the way it is if you love Lismore. Uh, and this one is called Fruit, and it goes like this. Um, when I taste a locust, I am a child in Mr. Zammet's workshop, saying giddy up on a wooden sawhorse. A woman walks down our street, serene and transcendent in her sari and dhoti. She looks a princess. When I taste a mango, I am a teenager. Schools of Trevelli turn Darwin Harbour white with foam. Larrakea women laugh on Casuarina Beach. Ebony skin flashing blue in the sun. Coconut palms luff in tropical time. When I taste a sapote, I am a man. My children run free on Tuntable Falls. Patamelons dash to safety, eagles circling overhead. And I wonder, what luck burst me here to discover peaches, rambutans, bananas, Brazilian cherries, apples, pawpaws, achachas, and so much more. Fruit, blessed fruit, my life is cupped in your splendor, your aftertaste of Eden, your foretaste of heaven. That was Doug from Nimbin. Doug is uh, well known here as a musician, but he's recently burst onto the poetry scene. Uh, please welcome next a visiting poet. I don't think she's read in Nimbin before. She was a feature at the recent Live Poets. Jan Mulcahy. Jan, come on down.
And this poem needs a little bit of introduction. Just a bit closer <laughs> to the mic, Jan. All right. <laughs> Is it right? Yes. Oh, go good. Go for it. <clears throat> so, um, so that you understand what I'm talking about, <laughs> I'll just read you what led up to writing this poem. <clears throat> it was inspired by Ed Ayres, who asked the ABC Classic FM listeners last year what famous French musician they would like to meet at the top of the Eiffel Tower, what would they talk about, and how would they descend to ground level? Easily answered with a favourite composer of mine, being Hector Berlioz, who lived from 1803 to 1869. <clears throat> so I went to the uh, poetry workshop and uh, I was able to channel Hector Berlioz. <clears throat> Does my appearance startle you here at the top of the Eiffel Tower with the lights of Paris glowing down there? Surely you did not expect a modern man? Here I am, as I was in 1869, curly red hair over my ears and my suit a little shabby. To tell the truth, I am depressed and had been so for the past 10 years. It nearly killed me when there's a Critics called my beautiful Romeo and Juliet symphony ramshackle. The fools! Could they not see Richard Wagner in the audience? A mass of goosebumps making mental notes for his Tristan and Isolde. Full of praise to my face and pinching my harmonies for his Liebestadt. I at least waited until Beethoven was dead before I borrowed from his choral symphony. Can you imagine how I felt at Richard's premiere in 1865? Such an act of piracy. I wept all the way through. He and Von Bulow were thrilled at my response. And I went along with it, of course, to save my face. But I felt like a dead man at my own funeral. All those clever musicians who play their well-trodden classical patterns. I terrify them with my offbeat surges and burst from the inner music and sparkle like sunlit foam on a wave. They scoff because the only instrument I ever mastered was a childhood flute. You can think I'm an egotist. Others have said it. I don't need to play an instrument. The whole, the music I write is an immortal language. The whole orchestra is my instrument. Nobody can match my orchestration. I tell you, music comes to me from paradise. For those who know how to listen, it is food for the soul. Come, drink your champagne and join me for a final plunge over the side of this tower. <laughs> Good morning all, how are we today? Right. <laughs> Excellent. My things, are, my things are a bit darker than previous poems, but what is light without darkness, yin without yang, all that kind of stuff. So this next one's called Born in a Cupboard. Lord of twilight, God on high, pluck me from your opal sky. As sun doth set, tonight dead fall, retrospect turns into faith. Neglect takes on an air of truth, and wisdom loses out to lies. 
One more drink for bloodshot eyes of solid red of desperate thighs. I'm sorry I forgot to stand. I cannot sit. The dead man's hand! A silent scream of violence pure. Golgothan dreams are Sodom's cure. But can it all be really here? Just one more scotch, a rum, a beer. In retrospect, I've spent my life glued slightly to a vinyl chair. I won't fall off as long as I have orders from a god on high. I sit and ponder earthly things, thoughts stuck in limbo, eyes dark and dim. Glasses filled up to the brim, a pint half drunk with pills and sin. Take it nightly, dose it twice. The beast engorged, a daily fight. A lonesome tear falls in my beer as all my walls cave in with fear. But what is real? Have you even seen air? Hallucinate me, baby, just pretend I'm there. My mind is jarred and full of beer, left in a cupboard pickled raw. Surely life is just a chore. Endless drinks poured in between. Dinners I have loved and seen. Yay! Thank you. Um, no, I wasn't at the Aquarius Festival. I had one little an ankle biter clinging onto my leg and I was seven weeks away from having the next one and quite frankly I didn't care about the Aquarius Festival. We were down in Melbourne doing other things but I do honour all the people that um, came before and helped pave the way for the later settlers. It's a fabulous place to be. Now I didn't get the um, memo about poetry from the heart so this is really um, bullshit from the heart. <laughs> oh, first one, rattling cutlery jaw. My ex-loves have all felt free to suggest for your own good, Jane, ways of changing me. So on a self-improvement bender, I mushed their ideas in a blender and this is how I'm going to be. I'll be not so upfront Celtic, an island princess will be fine. Not so typically redhead, they request brunette next time. I'll love all their friends sincerely and all their kids, that's fine. I'm content behind my master, the shadow to his shine. I'll turn down my volume, censor every word I say, relinquish my opinions. I know we're better off that way. No, never laugh at his ex-wives or with the currents I'll behave. I've chucked out all my humour and my poetry's thrown away. I'll be more dish, ran away with the spoonless rattling cutlery jaw. Give up my old non-drinking ways, that pleasure will be yours. Your tiny imperfections, I promise I'll ignore. And every day, regardless, you'll be worshipped more and more. Oh, you hardly recognise me now. I'm more sedate, that's true. I've given up punk, rock and angst gone country through and through. <laughs> Your gorgeous, silent siren, adoring Everything you do, ensuring every bit of attention is on you, 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 you. Thank you. And another one about the inner workings of my brain. The tenant. At the back of my brain, there's a room I rent out to a writer sits at his desk scratching out one-liners, punches his fist into the air, spins circles in his leather swivel chair and laughs. He loves his jobs, his books sell, sayings quoted, words repeated, his public can't get enough, calls himself Mr. Rude and Reckless, but to me he's only Frank, my loud mouth tenant makes his easy money writing pathetic one-line insults. But he says that's what gets results. When I ask him why the public buys that stuff, he says, the trouble with you, Jane, honey, is you're too stitched up. Cops and Mr. Rude advice. Forget being so nice to everyone. Have fun. 
be me, be vile, be brutal. Go for the verbal jugular, shoot straight from the mouth, let it tumble out. Practice daily, say things like, take a look at yourself. Everyone thinks you're a complete idiot. No wonder your wife left you. What the hell do you think you're wearing, artist? My ass, no talent, waste of space. And your kids hate you, your writing stinks, your politics suck, you're a fat slog, get off your ass, do it yourself, lazy fuck. Oh, and now you're disgusted, but don't blame me for that. You've got my tenant to thank. I'm being Mr. Rude and Reckless himself. As instructed, I'm being frank. Thank you.